This is my third video on SFS2 within a week. Is this considered content farming? God, I feel like Pegasus. <sighs> anyway, in this video we have the SFS2 trailer release date, the actual numerical pricing for SFS2, a confirmation on the type of update that SFS1.6 is gonna be, and of course more leaks. So let's begin. First up, SFS2 is made with Unity and not with Unreal Engine as some people were speculating. Next we have some pictures of the parts at the launch pad and we can see the no scone, RCS, the small engine, a small fuel tank and our cute astronaut, a small capsule, bro he's just chilling, an interstage, a parachute, a fin, the rover base we saw in this picture and rover wheels 1 and 2. We also have a look at the big parts here and they are big. I mean look at the astronaut for scale here. Steph has said that the maximum these parts can go is 10 meters in diameter. That is bigger than Starship. So yeah, you can make a full scale Starship in SFS2. Now since these parts are so big, they need a giant launch pad. I mean look at the astronaut here for comparison. It's so small as compared- No, don't do it! We also have a statement from Steph about the rocket rollout mechanism. That was the rail system I talked about in a previous video. Steph has said that although the game does allow a rail rollout system to exist, the team does not plan on implementing it because it would be too much effort put towards something not as significant. Steph has also reiterated that the game will be very optimized, the developers are working very hard and they have many restrictions regarding the optimization to make sure that the game performs very well on every platform. I mean, just look at the polygons of the launch pad and even the parts have less polygons that you would expect them to have. And all this is because less polygons means less processing power to render them, which means that your game will run smoothly and your phone will not set on flames while playing SFS2. Next, we have a confirmation of SFS 1.6 and Steph has confirmed that there will be a 1.6 update and that it will be focused more on the propulsion side of the game, like the more boosters update in KSP. But these new parts will not be available in the free version. These parts will be split across the existing parts DLC that we have and a separate new DLC. So yeah, SFS 1.6 will come at a price tag for all the players, regardless of whether they have bought the DLC or not. Speaking of DLCs, we have a confirmation of the actual price of SFS2. Steph has confirmed that SFS2 will cost somewhere between $20 and $30 for the Steam version and for the mobile versions, the base game will be free but there will be paid DLCs like I talked about in my previous video. But what's new here is that there will be more DLCs than we have in SFS1 and the combined bundle of DLCs for the mobile version will cost similar to the Steam version so about $25 which means that both the PC and the mobile versions will cost about $25 for the full game. This makes SFS2 a little bit pricier than Juno which costs $20 but a lot cheaper than KSP which costs $40 for the base game. And as always, these are localized prices, which means that Apple, Android and Steam will have different prices in different countries. So for example, KSP costs $40 in the US, but it costs 850 rupees in India, which is a little over $10. And I know a good chunk of my viewers are not from the US. So for most of you guys, SFS2 is most probably going to be cheaper. Okay, now for the big thing. The trailer release date. Steph has confirmed that the trailer is going to drop in just a day or two. The timestamp on this screenshot is 11pm. I am recording this at 2am and this video will probably go out by 6am Indian time. So I think it is safe to assume that we can expect the trailer to be released latest by 31st of August. It may be sooner than that. It may be even 30th of August. And when it happens, your most hated content farmer will let you know. So like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.